Did you think that was going to happen? Did you think it was going to be that big, that you were going to be able to do everything you can do from your smartphone? 25 years ago, you, would, you just dismissed this internet thing as something that only kids did, and it was ridiculous, and, and why don't we just want to have a phone call with someone or see someone in person, and the internet is where it is today. The metaverse is the next logical step for that. Hi, welcome to the Interaxis channel and Interaxis.io. Today we're going to talk a little bit about metaverses and, and discuss kind of what is, what is a metaverse, why might it be important, uh, what to look for, how cryptocurrency, uh, decentralized finance, blockchain, NFTs, DAOs, how all that factors into things like a metaverse and why it's so important. Remember, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, follow us on Twitter at Interaxis8. Now, what is a metaverse? A metaverse in, in this world, and, and I apologize for those that are overly technical, uh, I'm going to make this a little less technical because uh, I want to I try to help people understand, so I'm not going to be completely accurate on all the technicals, um, but I'm going to try to make people understand. So a metaverse is something like a virtual world, so we'll just call it that. It is, it is a virtual world. Now, some of these virtual worlds that we've seen, that, that have seen come up, are Decentraland. Uh, there's one called Somnium Space. Um, there's one called Superworld. There's CryptoVoxels. Okay, so the, these are just some, and I know there are others, and I apologize. So these, these are kind of metaverses. Now, other there's other aspects to metaverses, right? There's gaming, there's games that are metaverse related or metaverse style games. But these are essentially virtual worlds, virtual lands that are, that are created and they exist digitally. So within these virtual worlds, you can go buy land. And some of them, like Decentraland, for instance, have their own cryptocurrency called, the, 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 the symbol is mana. The, Cryptocurrency is called Decentraland, the symbol is mana. And you have to own mana in order to buy land within Decentraland. Um, so some of these other worlds you can buy using, uh, you can just buy worlds using ETH. Superworld, for instance, actually is overlaid on top of an actual map of the world. So you can buy the virtual version or the digital version, the virtual version of real places in the world. So they have different use cases. Now, what is happening in, in these metaverses? What are people doing? Well, they're able to, uh, again, build worlds. They're able to build buildings. They're able to have spaces that are theirs. And those could be you know, kind of virtual homes. We've seen virtual art galleries. We've seen um, racing that goes on. People have virtual vehicles. All sorts of uh, virtual aspects there where, where people can get together, congregate, communicate, chat share things. This is all happening within these metaverses. And you might think to yourself, this seems ridiculous, seems crazy. I can't believe people are getting to, or are actually getting together. They're just going to sit on the sofa or sit in their rooms and, and congregate in these fake worlds. Uh, and we see a lot of dismissal of that. That's for young kids. It's just like gaming. But if you really want to, to be honest and remember, 25 years ago, that was the internet. People said the same things about the internet. They said, why would I go to this weird web thing, this computer thing that I don't feel is very safe? Why would I start to buy things? Why would I chat with other people? Why would I get my news there? I get a newspaper, I can watch TV, right? I, don't, I, don't, I can record my shows on VHS uh, tapes or you know, I can go to the store and buy things. We, we heard all of those things about the internet, but here we are, we chat, we have smartphones. I can call a car to come get me right now wherever I'm standing and the car and the phone and Google and everyone will know exactly where I am and whether or not you think that's good, doesn't matter, it exists, it's out here. So what has happened now between um, cryptocurrency, uh, something like NFTs, the, the huge rise of gaming and the interconnectedness, and of course what happened with the, the COVID pandemic is we have this huge rise in metaverses. And, and what has actually happened? Well, first, what happened was the internet brought everybody together, right? So you had people that were all dispersed all over from a geographic perspective. 
and I was close with certain people based on geography. I lived close to them, I, I worked close to them, I went to school close to them, whatever it might be. Geographically, this is how I found people. And if I wanted to find people with common interests, I kind of had to find people that were geographically close or I had to go to where those people were, right? That's how I kept in touch with people. Then what happened was you had the internet. And the internet gave me the ability to find people that I want to be around, that, that have some of the same interests, and allowed us to converse, allowed us a place that we could go chat or talk about what we wanted to do. And of course, it started out as chat. It started out as chat rooms, message boards, emails. Eventually, it got into um, applications like Slack or Discord, or some places that we could go actually chat about things and do so in real time. Of course, more recently, we've seen things like Zoom and Google Meet and Microsoft Teams, ways that we can actually see each other and be in the same virtual room together talking about what we want to talk about. So what it took was people who had common interests, and those common interests were originally geographic. So I had to find people that liked what I like, people I want to talk about what I, what I want to talk about with, that were actually close to me or I had to go to them. Then the internet gave me the ability to actually converse with them and, and chat with them, but we don't have to be in the same room. It brought us together. What it didn't bring necessarily was money. What the internet didn't bring was the internet of money. Now, part of this internet, part of people that I want to do things with, of course, is gaming. And gaming being we can play these, you know, these multiplayer games where we can connect to each other, of course, with Xbox and, and, and you know, gaming uh, consoles like that where people are able to connect gaming-wise and, and do things together, be, as a, be a team or be against each other, whatever it might be, together. Now, within some of those games, and some of them were Xbox-related, some of them were computer-related, you could also earn, uh, earn things like uh, weapons, Right, you could earn money within these games, but of course, it only stayed within the game. It worked like credits. It worked like like token, like Chuck E. Cheese token, like tokens you might have in your pocket, or some sort of credit you might have on a gift card. It only worked within that game necessarily. So you have all these things starting to come together. The, peop the people are connecting with gaming. People are connecting with the internet. Then, ha. Huh, you have the, the advent one of cryptocurrency, right? Now, maybe we can have this currency that we can use that is native to our own little game or our own little group within here. That's what we've developed with cryptocurrency, right? Because now you don't need to have off ramps necessarily. For this, if I had a weapon within a game, I had to use it within this particular game. If I had money that I earned within a game, I had to use it within this particular game. If I wanted to get money into the game, I had to somehow connect a bank account or a credit card or a debit card or something to the game. If I wanted to get money out, same thing, connect a credit card or a debit card or a bank account. That's how I got in, that's how I, I got out with money or weapons or whatever it might be, and they didn't necessarily translate. So now what we have is the ability to potentially, instead of money, I can get cryptocurrency. So this could be ETH. This could be something like mana in Decentraland. Okay, this could be, you know, Axie for, for Axie Infinity. It could be something like that where I can bring things from out. I, I can bring cryptocurrency. I can take my fiat currency, my dollars, or crypto that I have, convert it to something that can be used within the game, but do so in a decentralized way, meaning I just connect my digital wallet, my ETH wallet, or, or, or my crypto wallet, and buy some of these tokens. And now I'm in the game, and I have some sort of currency. I can start buying things. I can buy clothes. If it's not a game, if it's decentralized, and I just want to walk around decentralized, I can buy clothes. Uh, I can potentially buy vehicles, whatever it might be. I can now go buy land. I can buy that plot within the virtual world. And why is that important? That's just the next iteration of buying a website, right? When you buy a website, you're buying digital land. You're buying digital real estate. That's what we actually used to call it. It was digital real estate. Well, now digital real estate can actually look like it's in three dimensions based on looking. It can be a building. Well, what can I do within that digital building? Well, what if I want to display my NFT art? Can't I have an NFT art gallery within there? Of course I can. And then the people that want to go look at my art, maybe I want to charge them. 
right? Well, in order to get into my building, you have to have a certain token or a certain amount of mana tokens or something. Or I, you've purchased my, my NFT. You've purchased some of my art before. So now you get to come in and, and look at that art within my gallery. Or maybe within my gallery, if you want to display your art, you come and you show that you own this particular NFT, this token, and all of a sudden your art gets showed in my gallery in this virtual world. Well, why would people want to go play in this virtual world? It's because we have shown that people want to connect with others that have similar interests, and not those people are not necessarily geographically close. Now, with the internet, we can connect to people and we can form communities that are not based on geography, that are based on interest, based on people that we want to connect to. And with cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, now we have money that can also connect us. So within our little group, within our, our group that we want to connect with, and when I say little, it could be a monstrous group. And that group could be within a game. It could be within a, a metaverse. We can connect and we can have a currency within there. And that way, we don't, necessarily, we, we, we don't necessarily have to go back to fiat currency. We don't have to rely on bank rails to be able to transact within this metaverse. We can do it all with cryptocurrency. We can show, show things off, whether it's a car or clothes we're wearing or NFT art or provide a loan. I can ha put up a bank in a metaverse and start providing decentralized loans to people within this metaverse, and it can all be based on DeFi. The cool part is, if some of these weapons or some of these money that, that the, some of this money I have, whether it's within a game or a metaverse, if it's crypto related, I can take it out of there without having to connect to a bank and maybe utilize it in a different metaverse or a different game. Maybe a weapon that I have in this game, maybe it's an NFT based sword or something, maybe I can take that NFT somewhere to some other game and maybe it shows up as a gun. Maybe it still shows up as a sword. Maybe it shows up with some sort of attribute that I didn't think it would have on some other game. Now they're interchangeable. Now I can be with other people who w just want to play different games and just because I build up weapons or money or something of value in one game doesn't mean that I have to keep playing that one. Maybe I can go try others now because I have it. And the combination of metaverse, of this, of this next iteration of internet, the fact that now I can have digital real estate plus cryptocurrency, plus NFTs, again, plus what happened with COVID where everyone had to be home. And from a geographic perspective, you couldn't go find those people that had the same interests. You had to connect with them online. It happened much faster. So now what you have is you have communities being built up online through the internet and moving to metaverses where you can create buildings, you can create real estate, you can create entire worlds that have some level of value there. You can show movies within it. You can have concerts within here. You can give people tickets to virtual concerts that are only happening on a metaverse. The only way you can see in here is by having these tokens and being close to that building in the metaverse. Well, now that building that shows that con that has that concert or shows that art has value within the metaverse. You can charge rent. I can charge you rent to be able to display your NFTs here. And by the way, everyone who comes in now is you're going to get a small cut of that. It actually opens up monster economies because now people can be digitally connected and have their money digitally connected within these metaverse worlds. So, to anyone who is dismissing metaverses, dismissing virtual worlds like Decentraland, Insomnium, and Superworld, and uh, crypto voxels, and I apologize to any of the others that I'm missing, anyone who's dismissing something like that, anyone who's dismissing um, virtual gaming, because they say it, it's it's for kids and it's for people who aren't social. This is hyper social. This is the ability to actually converse with people you want to converse with. It's better. It makes you happier to be around people you want to be with. And now you can have an economy around it. You have currency around it. You have assets that you can hold within there. You can have DeFi related applications within some of these metaverses. It's extremely important. They can be governed by something like a DAO. You can have your own area within there, potentially, and your own government within the virtual world. Now, of course, there are some that are actually bridging onto the actual world to say, look, we're going to have this virtual land, and if you own this virtual land, it will sync up with 
actual land, with actual property. And maybe by owning the virtual land, you can buy the real life land and build something on it. And you own it digitally and you own it in real life. This is, this is just happening, okay? And this is what metaverses are. And so again, anyone who dismisses it as something that kids play with or techies play with or, or something that, that isn't, isn't going to make it, look at where the internet was 25 years ago and think about whether you thought we were going to get to this point where we had YouTube, we had social media influencers, we were able to watch anything we wanted to watch, whether it's movies or TV or whatever, online through your computer or through your TV at home, which is essentially now just a conduit for a computer. Did you think that was going to happen? Did you think it was going to be that big, that you were going to be able to do everything you can do from your smartphone? 25 years ago, you, would, you just dismissed this internet thing as something that only kids did, and it was ridiculous, and, and why don't we just want to have a phone call with someone or see someone in person, and the internet is where it is today. The metaverse is the next logical step for that. Okay, so the metaver metaverses are going to be very important. It's just di a digital representation of what we're trying to do anyway, a virtual representation of worlds and lands. And some of it is, this is how I would like for people to see myself. This is how I can be relatively anonymous and go into these worlds and be myself, be who I really want to be. So metaverses are going to be extremely important. Again, we're not telling people you should invest in them. We're not telling people you should buy any certain tokens. What we're saying is, there is a huge real potential economy here, There's huge real potential businesses that are going to be built on these metaverses and it's going to be so interesting to see all the creativity that's going to go into building. We've already seen auction houses built in there, we've seen uh, entertainment venues built within these metaverse. We've seen the prices go up tremendously already and we're probably going to see that continue. So we wanted to talk a little bit about metaverses, why it's going to be so important uh, in, in the near and distant future uh, and it's potentially the, one of the biggest things between metaverses and NFTs, the biggest advents, the biggest things to come out of blockchain technology because it's just the next logical step in the internet. So we hope you enjoyed this. We hope you'll subscribe. We hope to see you on Twitter at Interaccess8 and in the next video.